How's it everyone? This is Lockerhole, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking about Legion 5 ways how to get your level 100 very cheaply, possibly even in a profitable way, and how to actually do the AFK 5 way properly. I've been doing these for the last couple of days. There's some people you would think it's it's impossible to mess up standing still, but still some people don't get it right. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to AFK in a Legion 5 way properly. So first off, how do you find your Legion 5 way? And for those of you who don't know, the Legion 5 way is a method of leveling where you basically stand there in the middle of a domain of timeless conflict and you just stand there and the carry kills stuff, the Aurobot mostly keeps you alive and you get ridiculously good XP really quickly. So how do you find one? So if you go on the Forbidden Trove, I know, I know. You can type in five way here and you should see on the right, normally you'll find something like this. Want to sell softcore five way AFK run region EU price 110 C. I prefer doing these in bulk. So, well, I mean bulk, I mean two div for five run rather than one div for or 110 C for one run. This could be cheaper. You can farm around. What I do recommend is trying to find a run in your own region and that just comes down to ping and leveling up your gems which you will get to in the next stage but all you need to do is find something like this you copy this and then message the person they'll invite you send it through so that's how you find your five ways but how do we make our legion five ways either profitable or at least free so while we are in the five ways, we can level up a whole lot of gems. You just drop it in your gear. And like you can see here, I've done a few. I've done quite a lot actually. And I have 71 gems that are 20, 20. So level 20 with 20% 20 quality. Now these are prepared to be corrupted to level 21. And if we get enough good ones, then well, we could sell them and possibly recoup some of the costs. So how do you know which gems to level up? So over at PoE Ninja, this is PoE.Ninja. On the left hand side, you see here skill gems. These are the value of skill gems and you've got things like Awaken, Enlighten, Support. We don't want to see those. What we want to know is which are the highest value level 21 gems that have, let's say, 20% quality. And we're just going to say type normal. If you do want to get really nerdy with this, you can use Enlightens and Empowers or Alt Quality Gems. But just for the basic, cheap, easy way to do this, where you don't have to go sit on the trade side trying to buy 30 gems, you can just go over here. So level 21, 20 quality, type normal. And you can see Elemental Penetration. This you only get from a vendor recipe. So I normally ignore this and then see what are people using. All right, Purity of Vice is very popular with RF builds. Life tap, mana forge arrows. This is presumably because of Palstron's new build. So these gems are gonna change on a fairly regular basis. So don't always assume, oh, I'm always gonna level up a mana forge arrows. Check this first, see what's good. It is gonna change if a popular creator releases a build, that gem is gonna suddenly spike in price because everyone now wants a 2120 mana forge arrows. But Try and grab as many of these as you can. You can grab all of the same one or you can grab a bit of a variety. I normally grab a variety and see what's most valuable. So these Devouring Totem, Explodey Totem, popular, Palstron's Mana Forge, popular. These are just generic RF. So grab these. These ones I grabbed. I also grabbed some Purity of Lightning because I got uh, jebated by the PoE Ninja thing. I don't think this is going to sell. So I rather got these other ones, but you put this in your gear and you level up. As for the gem leveling, so if you want to know how to get a 20% quality level 20 for very cheap, what you do is you just get a normal gem. When it reaches level 20, you go to a vendor, you go to sell items and you sell that with one GCP. It's going to give you a level one gem with 20% quality. So that's how I've got so many. I didn't have to spend tens of divines or I don't know many divines to get these all to 20% quality this one's already 2020 so I'm not going to sell it but you can see here Lily gives me back a level one gem with 20% quality then you chuck those back in your gear then level it up to level 20 and you've got a 2020 gem 
Another pro tip with gems is when you're in the five way, you can level your gems on the right here, the right side of the screen, or, and what you should do is level it from your inventory. From here, you can click the gems and you have no fear of accidentally misclicking and then running off to the side and getting killed by something. So you just open your inventory and then click, 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 and level it up that way. Don't do it on the side. It's much better to do it this way. And one other pro tip with gem leveling is you want to make sure that you have the attribute requirement for the gems. So if you're leveling devouring totems, you are going to need at least 155 strength. You can just look at your tree, see where there's some strength. Maybe you have a piece of strength gear that you can use to get to that 155 breakpoint of strength or dexterity or intelligence, whatever it is. If you're really rich, you can also use an Ashes of the Stars to get your gems some more experience, but that's really, that's overboard. I just happen to be using this for this build. Speaking of gear, there is some very specific gearing that we want to do. So there are a few items in the game that grant increased experience. So we have Chitis or Chitis, Chitis Apex. This gives you 5% increased experience gain. Then we have the Supreme Truth. This is 3% experience gain. You can use two of these. If they're in your off hands, you're not gonna get another 6%, but rather just keep two of these. Then you can get these Paranda Signets. These give you another 2% experience gain. So in total with these items, you use two of these rings, is 15% experience gain. However, there is this rather weird mod on both Hunter and Shaper rings, which is two to 3% increased experience gain. These are a little bit more expensive. If you get one of these, I think these cost, let's see, 3% increased experience gain is about a divine. So if you really want to min-max, you can grab these. Otherwise, you can get a Paranda Signet for 15 chaos this helmet is worth eight and these are worth 10 so it's very cheap very cheap you don't need these special rings but now another thing how do you survive your five ways some people i've been in five ways and they just die over and over and over again you're not only wasting your xp you're wasting your time you're wasting your currency and the main thing that people struggle with is getting their chaos res capped so they'll run around trying to find as much chaos res as they can. However, there are three items, just three items that you can use to get from minus 60% chaos res all the way up to 75. And those three items are gonna be Dusk Toe, 50% chaos res during flask effect. These are literally one ulk items. Then you just need an amethyst flask. This doesn't even need the increased effect. You can have it if you want, but it's not necessary. What you want to have on this, and this is very important, is reuse at the end of this flask effect or reuse when charges reach full. This way, this flask is going to keep using itself over and over and over as soon as it's done. So you can actually just sit there doing something else without fear of dying. And then the last thing is a belt. With Essence of Delirium, you have this mod 50 to Chaos Resistance during any flask effect. It's the same as the boot. And if we add this all up, we have 50 plus 50, 100 plus 35 is 135, which from minus 60 to 75 is 135. So to cap your Chaos Res, you literally need one Elk Boots, an Amethyst Flask, and one Essence of Delirium, and you're sorted. You don't need to respec stuff on your tree and all of that. The reason that you do need your Chaos Res is because of those blobs. I, I don't know the monster mob, but it drops like a green blob on your head. And if you're not Chaos Res capped, you're probably going to die. Most five ways are going to have an aura bot. I actually think they always have an aura bot now. That will cap your other resistances or give you some energy shields. So you don't have to worry about your other resistances. But Chaos Res, you are going to need to sort out. You're probably also going to want at least three and a half three to three and a half thousand life although honestly with the discipline from the orobot it's normally enough to keep you alive now we do want to talk about one other thing another thing i've seen people do wrong is they go into five ways way too early there's people in there who are level 59 trying to level up in five ways and they'll go through like two runs to level up once which is ridiculous you should just go to blood aqueducts and level up i think the kind of safe zone 
is around level 67, that's when you're going to actually start ramping up XP. And we can see this on this chart. So for those of you who don't know, there is an XP penalty. If your character is too high or too far above or too far below the monster level, then you're going to get diminishing experience. So this graph illustrates it very well. In the domain of timeless conflict, it's an area level 84 zone. So you can see here at level 60, you're getting you know, a zero point, I don't know, zero, zero, one percent experience efficiency. I don't know if these are breakpoints or if this actually does go all the way down to, you know, zero point zero one percent. So if you're level 60 in a level 84 zone, you're getting no experience. You're wasting your money. You're wasting your time. Just go do some blood aqueducts. Get a buddy of yours to run you through some low level maps. You can even do some blight maps with three green oils i think three viridian oils that should give you some experience you can see up here at level 65 you're still in this kind of yikes zone where you're getting almost no experience and then around level 67 this is when you start getting that 0.1 percent well i guess this is 10 percent yeah 10 percent efficiency the best is probably to start around level 70, level 72. Then you're starting to get into this area where you're actually getting really good experience. And then around level 77, that's just the peak when you're just getting max experience for about 10, 10, 12, 15 levels. This is when you're going to level up really fast. And then you're going to, once you get past here, around level 90, then the experience is going to start falling off and it's going to take longer and longer. But very important. Don't go into your five way at level 60. You're just wasting your currency. You're wasting your time. You can level up from level 60 to level 70 in much more efficient ways. Another thing, if you die in your five way, don't click the resurrect button. This, unfortunately, there's a bug where the resetter has to then stand in the middle for longer. So the way five ways works is there's a, a monolith in the middle and then a player has to run in and out of this kind of dome to reset the monsters. And if someone dies and leaves, they have to stand in that dome for much, much longer. Often a second player has to come in and then help them to reset. So just if you die, stay dead. And if you do want to reset, I used to always do resetting because it was cheaper. Normally you get a big discount if you did resetting. Nowadays it seems like the Aurobot is the one who does the resetting. However, what I used to do, if you do want to be a resetter, like I said, there's that zone in the middle with the monolith and there's kind of a purple dome over the top of it that you need to run in and out of to, to reset it. But what I would do would use a smoke mine and a flame dash. Guitarholic is in my hideout making a big loud noise. Get yourself a smoke mine and a flame dash. And what you can do, so you stand in the middle and then it charges up and then you can drop one little smoke mine here. And then when it goes and it resets, then you flame dash out and then immediately hit. Wait, that did not work. You drop your smoke mine there you flame dash out and then immediately push D to detonate your mine and then you immediately go back under the dome. So smoke mine here, flame dash out, back in. And you just do that over. Otherwise you can just get good movement speed and go in, out, in, out like that. But I like the smoke mine tech. That used to that used to work really well for me. So before we go, let's let's see what we get on these gems. We have all of these. We want to corrupt them. Let's see how much currency we made. I think I I spent about nine divines on leveling up a couple of characters this one from level 91 to 99 i had another guy that i leveled up from 70 to 95 and that was about nine divines let's see if we can make a profit so we're going to type in 21 max let's see how many of these we can get to level 21 either i'm getting very unlucky or my regex is borked Corrupted. All right, let's see how many we got level 21. Okay, so not that many. Here are all the level 21 gems we got. I was really expecting a few more, but we can look at the price of these, see how much it adds up to. We have our level 21 life tap, 100 and 120 C, 
Level 21 Divine Blessing, 130C. Devouring Totem, about 125. Splitting Steel, uh, this one probably about 95. This was something that I leveled up before. Purity of Fire, level 21. Again, yikes. This one probably, let's say 65. These gems do fluctuate very rapidly in terms of the meta. Herald of Ice, though, one divine, about, or, I mean, we could probably list this, eh, yeah, I mean, if we put this up for, let's say, 180, it would probably sell very fast, and we got two, and then this Purity of Lightning, this is just, I, I think the, I think PoE borked, so we spent nine divines times 220, that's about 1980, and on the gems we got, we got 120 plus 130 plus 125 plus 95 plus 65 plus 180 plus 180 plus 40. So we got back about 935C divided by 220 is 4.25 divines. I think that if we had done the correct gems and maybe hit a few more, <laughs> we would have we would have done a bit better. But we can also maybe list some of these other ones. Maybe someone just wants a 2020 Raised Spectre or a 2020... Yeah, like this Mana Forged Arrows is still 25C and we've got quite a few of them. So we should at least recoup some of the costs. And if you do get lucky and you do do the right gems, you could even turn a profit. So that's going to be it for this video. Hopefully after watching this, you know how to do five ways properly it feels ridiculous that i even had to make this video but i saw so many people just messing it up and i thought let me let me show you how to do it properly so if you enjoyed the video please like and subscribe also if you have any other tricks for doing five ways by afking properly do let me know but this is how i do it and i never die nothing ever goes wrong and yeah all right well have a wonderful day everyone stay safe bye bye